myself with the remarks of the gentleman from Tennessee, the gentleman from Arizona, and the gentleman from South Carolina. And I want to tell a personal story somewhat like the South Carolinian told. You know, I made my living my entire life before I got here for 33 years selling houses, causing two people to come together and agree on a price, agree on terms, sign, shake a deal, and walk away from a closing table feeling like both of them won. I've also been elected to every legislative body I could be elected to in my state. And I've served in the legislatures for 34 years. I've negotiated deals, been on conference committees, and I never once find myself making a deal by intimidating or insulting the other side. What the President did this afternoon set us back in civility and in leadership and in deal making. Now I'm a big enough guy to know I'm not going to take it personal. If the desire was to offend me, the speech did, but if the desire was to deter me, it did not. It is time we all found ways to come together as Americans and solve our problems, not just in the short run, but in the long run. Not fill our room through of partisan supporters, but instead cause everybody to sit together around the table and find a way to make a deal. This is the greatest country on the face of this earth, and it will continue to be unless we forget what got us here. What got us here are the American people, not the American politicians. The American businessman, the American entrepreneur, the American worker, the American laborer, and the American leader. People who through their sweat, their blood, and their toil built businesses, built factories, built companies, and made this great enterprise known as the United States of America work. If we want to raise our revenue, sure, you can raise by percentage looks your revenue by raising your assessment, but if you lower your base, your revenue goes down. What we need to do is empower our base by right raising the prosperity of the American businessman, the American employee, and the American worker. And as their prosperity rises, taxes will go up not because we're charging them more by rate, but because they're making more and, the rate and the, what they pay goes up because they're more prosperous. You will never raise the revenue you need by insulting the American people or taking away the incentives to work, make a living, make, take a risk, and be an entrepreneur. So while we had a speech today that, whose intention I really don't know what it was, it probably protracted and delayed what we're trying to do here today. And that's find a way to come back and fight another day. And I agree with Senator Graham. The big battle is yet to come, and it's over the debt ceiling. And it's going to be a big battle, and I share every comment and every sentiment that the Senator Graham said, because that's the one where we have to find a way to make a deal. And the President's not going to make a deal by poking us in the eye and by charging one side against the other to try and have a win-win proposition. I never made a deal if it wasn't a win-win proposition. I always lost a deal when I made it a win-lose proposition. I'm at the table. I continue to negotiate. I want to make this country work. But let's work together, let's find common ground, and in the 12th hour and the 11th hour, let's do what's right for the American people. But I want to thank Senator Graham, Senator Corker, and Senator McCain for their remarks. I associate myself with them. And Senator McCain, I'll yield back to you. I yield the Senator from Tennessee. Question, I yield.